What's up, everyone? It's Karthik with MoneyVest. So markets here essentially flat on the day with the Nasdaq here dropping a little bit over 39 basis points with the Dow Jones hitting new all-time highs at 42,300. So up a little bit over 33 basis points on the day. All three indices ended up closing the week positive, close to 1% higher on the week. And we're pretty much done for the entire month of September. We've only got one more trading day left next week on Monday, September 30th. And we're going to pretty much wrap up the entire month of September, which historically, based on seasonality, has not been the best month for the market. However, this time is indeed different, at least up until this point. And really, how much of a damage can one day really make in the markets, right? We'll find out next week here. But so far, the markets are up in the month of September. So if you take a look at the monthly time frame, the Dow Jones is up over 1.8%. The S&P 500 is up over 1.5% and the Nasdaq is up over 2.2%. So unless we see a huge gap down and a sell-off Monday morning, things happen over the weekend. Who knows? We are closing the month so far very, very strongly. Now, I also mentioned in my Discord, I pretty much closed out week five of our options portfolio. And the comment of the day comes from one of our members, MB24, made 650 on the Tesla option. This is my first option trade, which I'm profitable. Thank you. And this is messages like these is what really makes our community and our work so much more important because... When you start trading options the right way, there is a sense of freedom. There is a sense of taking charge in your own personal financial life because it's really a skill that you are learning over time. It's really a strategy that you are trying to master as you are trading options the correct way. So we try to employ a very disciplined approach to trading options and it just really warms my heart when I read comments like these. So congratulations to everyone. I sent out this message in our Discord as well that a lot of our people, a lot of our members have been crushing it in the markets, in the options, and of course, individual stocks as well. So congratulations, you guys all deserve it. It's all the hard work that's coming through and now giving the fruit of all your labor. And uh, pretty much closed out five weeks of the options portfolio. I posted this update in our Patreon. So if you want to get access, there is going to be a link down below. 16% annual discount available for three more days. So until the end of this month, and we've got about three more spots left for this month if you are interested in joining us. And this right here is how the portfolio is doing. It continues to create that separation from the S&P 500 and the options portfolio is up a little bit over 5% in the last five weeks. So averaging about 1% per week, which is way above my goal. My goal is about 30 to 40 basis points. In other words, 0.3 or 0.4% per week. Uh, but right now averaging just a little bit over 1% per week here and the S&P 500 since the last week of August is up just under 2% if you were to do that calculation. So again, continue to create that separation and the goal isn't to just generate a higher return, it is also to lower volatility. So that's why we're going to be managing risk really well. So if you want to get access to all the portfolio updates, trade alerts, members only videos, money best website access, links going to be down below with that 16% annual discount. Now, in terms of these sectors and how did we perform energy getting a little bit of a rebound? So up over 2%. Uh, we're back into utilities, uh, just under 1% higher. Communication services, 0.6%. TLT pushing up about half a percent. We had financials, staples, discretionary, everything pushing higher. And really the money coming out of was technology. So QQQs and XLK were collectively down about half a percent to as much as close to 1% on the day. I think the brunt of that pain coming from NVIDIA after we report that China is urging companies, local companies to not buy from NVIDIA. I'll go over that in just a minute. But Tesla, of course, the big winner on the day here. Tesla, we had an option expiring today. I ended up closing my uh, contract before expiration and locked in the capital gain. Um, just a little bit closer to $650. That was the entire profit for our community, pretty much the entire trade between the cash secured put and the buy right. And uh, Tesla this week has had a phenomenal, phenomenal gain. I mean, this week, Tesla stock is up, just come over to the weekly time frame, uh, is up over 9%. So we had a very successful strategy on Tesla this week. Our community crushed it. Google was up a little bit over 89 basis points on the day. Apple was up just over 12 basis points, so essentially flat. Um, and then we had Meta, Netflix, Microsoft, 
Amazon, AMD down anywhere from half a percent to as much as almost 2% with NVIDIA coming down over 2% on the day. Now, this right here was the catalyst. So China urges local companies to stay away from NVIDIA's chips. Now, on the surface, they may seem this may seem very alarming. This may seem like what the hell that like this is actually quite crazy as China being one of the biggest artificial intelligence consumers. It's going to be producing so many technologies. It's urging companies to stay away from, you know, NVIDIA's chips. That's going to create a lot of a lot of potential missed revenue. It's really just a sort of like a hit piece on on NVIDIA because the same exact catalyst word for word, the same headline came out back in May. Literally, this is not fresh new. This is not a fresh catalyst. China is asking its tech giant to ditch NVIDIA chips and buy local instead. This came out on May 14th, 2024. The stock didn't really move much. It was basically flat. If anything, it was actually higher after the report came out. So Beijing is stepping up pressures on Chinese companies to buy locally produced artificial intelligence chips instead of NVIDIA. Uh, part of the nation's efforts to expand its semiconductor industry and counter U.S sanctions. Chinese regulators have been discouraging companies from purchasing NVIDIA's H20 chips, which are used to develop and run AI models, according to people familiar with the matter, and the policy has taken the form of guidance rather than an outright ban. Now, it's guidance, right? At the end of the day, it's really just advice that the Chinese government is giving to local companies that, look, we want to, we want to combat these U.S. sanctions, we want to promote our semiconductor industry, buy local, produce local, support the economy from within. Same things happened with the US. They've put bans and sanctions for ASML, for you know, LAM research, for NVIDIA, for AMD, to not sell their chips over to competitors or companies over in China uh, because they feel like they're going to weaponize all these chips and use them against them. Uh, so at the end of the day, when there is free markets and there is going to be capitalism, unless there are straight up outright bans um, for these companies, um, they're going to find a way to continue to do business, right? If there is going to be outright bans, they're going to find a way around it, right? That's what's happened with NVIDIA over the last couple of years. There's been a lot of news, a lot of pieces that's come out of US that have been putting sanctions over in China, other parts of the world, and essentially encouraging companies like ASML or LAM Research or NVIDIA, AMD to not sell those chips to China. And, and again, the China is also doing that. They're guiding their local local companies to uh, to buy local, invest in local semiconductor infrastructure as opposed to buying from, from NVIDIA. So in my opinion, I think these are this is just going to be continue to be a lot of noise. Anything else, uh, you know, the revenue is going to keep coming in. The numbers are going to still be very, very strong because that's where the world is headed, right? Just because NVIDIA uh, is, is, is the US sort of company, doesn't mean that Chinese companies are not going to buy from NVIDIA because this is the best in the best. Like this is the best of the product, right? Local businesses, local companies are not going to be able to compete with the compute power and the technological advancement that China, uh, that NVIDIA provides, right? So in, in that perspective, I think this is at the end of the day, it's guidance, it's advice, but obviously we know that they're not going to follow through with it because we've already seen what's happened back in May of 2024. So it's essentially just urging it. But at the end of the day, uh, NVIDIA should be, in my opinion, at least fine for the long term. Now, David Tepper uh, essentially was on Squawk Box earlier today. He said that we sold a lot of our NVIDIA, but the stock we thought was too high at the time. And those stocks like NVIDIA is a question. Do you have enough power for the growth? Do you have the next generation models that can uh, take their chip? I just don't know how you know. So uh, basically the crux of this interview was that the valuation seems to be high. The growth rates are going to start coming down. And that's why we sold a lot of our NVIDIA. Um, and, you know, eventually I think with growth stocks, I think we have to understand that, yes, as numbers get bigger and bigger, growth rates are going to come down. So right now they guided for 75% growth in revenues. And eventually what's going to happen is that NVIDIA is going to see growth rates come down. And as a result of that, I think multiples are going to stabilize. So the reason for our discussion around NVIDIA and Tesla that's been a little bit more than usual is because those are the two stocks that have been holding up really well. And those are also the two companies that are seeing a lot of inflows in market cap. They've been a lot more volatile. They're the ones actually leading or lagging technology altogether. Tesla over the last month or so has been very strong. I mean, if you take come over to the monthly chart, it's up over 21%. And as we already know, that NVIDIA, of course, has also been a very, very strong component of the entire market. Yes, the last four months have been very, very much sideways. It's been consolidating pretty much in that range. But for the most part, 
there's been a lot of volatility and i'll go over the options chain for those two companies here in just a minute but yesterday as we as we know there was a lot of big bets a lot of big shorts coming in for these two companies so big three was down about 88 billion dollars on the day we had magnificent seven down a little bit over 86 billion dollars and then top 10 was down over 133 billion dollars the top gainers once again tesla coming in leading the way here up over 21 billion dollars up almost two and a half percent on the day followed by google here 18 billion dollars then we had exxon mobile berkshire hathaway visa rebounding just over seven billion dollars or over 1.2 percent on the day here united health group chevron AbV and then Apple also coming in just over $3 billion. This right here was going to be the options chain. But before we come over here, uh, let's just quickly break down the stocks that were down in the S&P 500 the most. NVIDIA leading the charge on that front down over $66 billion or just over 2%. Then we had Amazon down over $33, almost $34 billion. Eli Lilly, Broadcom, Microsoft, Costco, Advanced Micro Devices, Intuit, Applied Materials and Accenture these were the top S&P 500 stocks that were down on a market cap uh, basis, right? So in terms of those outflows. Now, coming over to the options chain for NVIDIA. Now, this is going into next week. So 10-4, we're looking at October 4th. And I really want to drive your attention to the call side. So there are a lot of call options right now going into next week. As you'll notice that there's not a lot of put volume. So very, very low open interest um, for in the money puts and in the money calls maybe there's a uh, 22,000 contracts over here that are the $120 calls that are now already in the money but i really want to put your attention to one specific strike which is $130 going into next friday so $130 strike for nvidia going into next week 110,000 call options that are currently open of course and out of the money so that is a very very large volume as you can see that it's kind of like an outlier we don't have anything in the six digit mark for anything that's on the table here nothing even crosses over 50,000 let alone 110,000 so that is a lot of call options open right now for 130 dollars those are out of the money calls for 130 so a lot of expectations for nvidia to get up to that level in the next seven days or so going into october 4th Something to keep in mind. Uh, now, coming over to Tesla, same thing, going over to two different strikes, uh, two different ex uh, expirations and a couple different strikes. First one's going to be next Friday, so October 4th. That is going to be after the delivery numbers, but before the uh, RoboTaxi event. And once again, I want to guide your attention to 270 Dollars. That's going to be the strike here, over 12,759 contracts. Again, you know, since Tesla's trading at such high prices we don't have a lot of options or open interest in the five digit mark here nothing in the in the money put options out of the money puts here we're looking at of course four or five thousand range but if you were to combine all of these uh, i'm sure you're going to get somewhere around the twelve thousand eight thousand and then six thousand over here so there's definitely a net bullish bias on the call side than there is on the put side 270 275 and then 280 dollars those are the three strikes that have a lot of open interest going into next friday for tesla now coming over to the following friday which is also including for the robo taxi event which is going to be october 11th and that's where things get really really spicy we're now looking at 25,000 contracts open for the 270 calls on tesla so bullish sentiment is high and now if you were to essentially combine all these out of the money puts and these in the money puts none of them even combined come close to this big number over here which is 25,000 contracts that are currently open which are out of the money 270 dollar call strikes for tesla expiring two fridays from today which again, just goes to show that there is a bullish bias leading into the robo taxi event. Investors are betting for the possibility for Tesla to get up to $270. So it's possible that I trade a buy right on Tesla again next week leading up to those events. We'll find out very soon. We'll see what happens on Monday. Uh, but going into the options chain, certainly there is a lot of bullish bias going into um, both NVIDIA and Tesla. 
for the next, at least the foreseeable future. We're talking next week. Now, this right here were some of the bigger trades. Uh, this is not for the options chain for next week or the following week, uh, but this is really just some of the bigger trades that went through. And I believe I'm looking at NVIDIA right now. And I really want to point your your uh, you know your attention to one single trade that went through here. Uh, that was again today at around 7:14 p.m. local time, which is my time. That is about an hour and a half after the markets opened. And these are January 2025 puts on NVIDIA for $25. For $25. These are 34,000 contracts each combined. That's just under 70,000 contracts. 70,000 contracts is what we're looking at. Of course, whoever bought these puts only paid like a couple cents. So if you do the math, it comes out to just over $200,000. But these are $25 puts, 25 for NVIDIA expiring in January of 25. So a little over three months out, whoever bought these puts is really expecting at least some downside move so that these put prices increase from two cents, three cents on per contract to at least four, five, six, seven cents so they can double or triple their amount. But again, some crazy trades that I wanted to highlight. You can take some time, kind of go over all these, but there are a lot of spreads. So it's kind of hard to figure out exactly what the bias is, but I wanted to address some of those uh, trades there. Anyway, traders now see the Fed delivering another 50 basis point rate cut. So as we were going over the CME FedWatch tool, traders are now pricing in for a full 50 basis point rate cut on November 7th. That's literally going to be my 20th birthday. So I will be live to cover the FOMC meeting as well. But investors are becoming very optimistic for the possibility for another 50 basis point rate cut. Whether the Fed's going to deliver on that depends largely on the incoming data. So, for example, next week, we've got the jobs numbers coming out again. So it's the first Friday of the month of October. So 10-4, we've got, again, the average hourly earnings, the year-over-year -year numbers, non-farm payrolls, labor force participation, unemployment rate, all that super important stuff. Initial jobless claims, you got the composite PMI, services PMI, non-manufacturing PMI, factory orders, we got the ADP employment change, employment numbers, manufacturing PMI, ISM manufacturing employment numbers, business confidence, job offers, all that good stuff. It's going to be scheduled for the next week because we've got a new week starting. We got, once again, we got to run through that all economic data, such as unemployment, inflation, CPI, PPI, GDP numbers, everything. Now, coming over to the markets. Now, I will be doing a full detailed analysis on uh, the individual stocks. As always, we'll be doing a more dedicated video over the weekend for Max 7 um, because, you know, we're, we're going to have a longer break. We're going to have much more time to go over the technicals in a lot more detail. Uh, so in this video, I'm mostly going to be focusing on S&P 500 and the NASDAQ and, and very quickly going over NVIDIA and Tesla. So NVIDIA over here, so lower highs and higher lows. So a little bit of a consolidation symmetrical triangle. We got a bit of a breakout and right now we're getting rejected over here for NVIDIA starting to roll right back down and support level is going to stay put at $113 for NVIDIA once again. Uh, coming over to volatility. So VIX here did get a bit of a spike up over 10%. So as we discussed, we're kind of approaching October here. As we have discussed, October volatility tends to be a bit higher. So we're almost at 17 now. So it kind of went a bit more unnoticed because the markets didn't really sell off, right? So today was still, I would say, relatively green. I think portfolios may have been higher depending on how you're allocated. Uh, you know, based on that tactical rotation. But, you know, for the most part, technology, yes, slight slight pullback. NASDAQ was down about half a percent. S&P 500 was down, um, you know, over 11, 12 basis points. So not a big red day, but volatility was certainly higher. And I think part of the reason is because there, there was an increase in the put call ratio, right? So we, we did get up to over 0.765. Just a couple of days ago, we were at 0.662. So we have seen, you know, put call ratio go up over 17, 20%. In fact, we were much higher. So if you come over to the 30 minute time frame, we were as much as 0 0.90. So we were much higher during the day. And of course, rolled right back down. So there is a possibility that the markets are kind of gearing up for a potential pullback or a correction or a dip. And for those reasons, I think it's really important for us to remain cautious, especially when you consider the money of us index is trading well above four, 4.08 and as we pointed out in our previous updates, the last time we were at these levels was back in July. This right here was July. This right here was back in September. This was September. And this is where we are in October, pretty much going into October. And this is where the markets are. And every single time, again, this is not a surprise. We've seen some reasonable pullbacks here, some dips and some corrections. So are we going to see that once again? Of course, time will tell. But 
as, as it's happened before. That's why I'm asking you guys, I'm urging everyone in our community to remain cautious and be alert for a potential dip or a pullback or a correction. That's why we're going to be ready to deploy capital into the markets and, uh, you know, start looking for those deals once again. Uh, coming over to S&P 500 here on the daily time frame, again, hitting a brand new all time high. So that is very, very good to see. And if you come over to the market bias indicator, something that I've been testing for some time on the weekly time frame, uh, you'll notice that we are still trading well above it. Uh, this right here was a 2022 bear market. We briefly came down here in 2023 and then of course quickly recovered back up. And even the most recent pullbacks and dips, we've been bought up fairly quickly for the market. So we're still above that overall uptrend on a weekly time frame as we continue to hit new all-time highs. Uh, and again, this right here on the 30-minute time frame is putting us just to a new all-time high. Support level is going to stay put at 56.70 down to as well as 56.40 for S&P 500. And QQQ is also very similar, uh, still well within 3% of their all-time highs. And uh, resistance is going to stay put right above there here. I'm going to update that to 492, kind of aligned with that previous support level as we validated that level in the past. And that's going to be a resistance. That's where we gapped up to. And then, of course, sold off intraday. And support level is going to stay put at 477 for NASDAQ 100. So hope you all enjoyed this video and a complete update on the markets. We're going to keep it nice and short. I'm going to be going over the MoneyVest dashboard and the MAX7 technical analysis um, over the weekend because we're going to be able to spend more time with some more analysis. And Tesla, very quickly, breaking out. And the next target, as we already know, it's going to stay put at 270 to as much as $275 per share. So we're kind of coming up to that area of supply and that resistance for Tesla once again. So hope you all enjoyed this video, found it helpful. Make sure that you drop a like and subscribe to the channel. The bottom line is the volatility was higher up over 10% on the day here. The money vest index back over four. We've got the market trading at all time highs and we've got October just right around the corner with some very bullish bias on Tesla and NVIDIA going into next week as well as the following week as well. And of course, next week is going to be full of a lot of economic data coming out once again. So hope you all enjoyed this video, found it helpful. Make sure that you drop a like, subscribe to the channel. Links to our Discord and Patreon is going to be down below if you want to join. Of course, be a part of our MoneyVest community. 16% annual discount expires in three days. And as always, happy investing. I'll see you all in the next video.